All right, this is not going to be a comprehensive guide. As a comprehensive guide, it pretty much just amounts to learn the map and improve your mechanical skill. Get good, basically, and that's not very helpful. So instead, I can provide a list of tips that should help you as you get better. Many of these tips will be good for people who are still playing in squads, but they are especially important for solos. Tip number one, get an injector's case. Injectors in Escape from Tarkov can completely save your raid. There are four injectors that I think you absolutely need to carry as a solo, and two more that'll be helpful since you already have space for them. Uh, the two most important in my opinion are Propital and Zogastin. Zogastin completely removes all bleeds you currently have, as well as prevents you from getting any more for the next 200 seconds. Bleeds on their own, like a single bleed, isn't a big deal, but when they stack up, when you have two or three bleeds at a time and you're still in the middle of a fight, they can be a massive problem. Whether it ends up blacking a limb or your thorax or head, that is a major inconvenience. This completely removes the possibility of that happening. Definitely want to carry one of these, especially since they're fairly inexpensive. Propodols are also really good for that reason. They're probably the best bang for your buck injector in the game. Propodols provide you with a painkiller effect as well as slowly start to regen some of your health. They're very, very helpful when you don't have much time to heal in the middle of a fight. Personally, I love to pop one of these and then use a first aid kit to heal my thorax and head since those are the most important. And I allow the propodol healing to slowly regen my limbs so I don't have to take as much time to heal and can get back into the fight. Then there is the mule and the SJ6. These are fantastic for when a fight is done and you need to carry a lot of loot to the extract. As a solo, you're not splitting loot with anybody, so you get really heavy really quickly, and it can be a major problem when you are carrying 70 kilos and you have to sprint across an open field. These two ensure you get to your extract quicker and have enough stamina to get from cover to cover without being caught in the open sucking wind. Definitely want to pack these two. And the final two that are more optional but still good to have are the ETG-C and Morphine. Morphine is cheap and you can find it pretty much everywhere. It's great because it activates very, very quickly. Um, I love to carry one of those as a spare in the event that I already use my Propodol and need another painkiller. And it also doesn't take, you know, 10 seconds to open a Golden Star or something like that. So good to have since you already have space. The ETG-C is just a better Propodol. It regens you much quicker. I don't think it provides a painkiller effect though. But the reason I don't want to say it's an absolute necessity is because it is much more expensive. I think it's 130,000 rubles. So if you have money and you already have the space, definitely pick one of those up. Otherwise, for most situations, a Propodol is probably going to be fine. But the ETG can come in clutch in very dire situations. Tip number two. If you heard something, you heard something. Escape from Tarkov audio is notoriously terrible. Because of that, it can be very easy to dismiss noises you hear as being Tarkov audio bugs. This is not the best idea, solely because of the fact that while well, most of the time they may simply be bugs, on the times that they aren't, you're gonna pay for it. So if you think you hear something, even if you think you're going schizo, just act like there is a genuine threat in the area and be prepared for it. It's better to be prepared when there is not a threat nearby than to go barreling headfirst into three PMCs that were waiting for you. Tip number three, don't get cornered. As a solo, if you get cornered, it's basically a death sentence. If these guys knew where I was, which they should have considering they were shooting at me when I ducked behind this truck here, uh, I would have been completely screwed. Two of them focusing on me and I'm trapped in a corner. No matter which direction I go, they're inevitably gonna have line of sight on me. If they knew where I was, I was an easy kill. The only reason I survived this is because they had terrible aim and they lacked object permanence. Typically, this is what is going to happen if you get cornered. Getting cornered completely limits your options. It takes all the initiative away from you. If you're ever gonna sit down to either pack a mag or heal, try to do it in a location where you have multiple avenues of escape or at least multiple angles to peek from. Tip number four, initiative is everything. When it comes to fighting, taking the initiative is one of the most important things you can do. It allows you to uh, control the flow of the fight a little bit and it allows you to somewhat fight on your own terms. 
It's also important because of Peeker's advantage. Peeker's advantage in Tarkov used to be much more powerful than it is now. Some people will even go so far as saying it doesn't exist nowadays. Um, it very much does for two reasons. One, the netcode might have improved, but this is still Tarkov, so it's definitely not perfect. And second, humans have this thing called reaction time. When you are the person who is initiating, when you are the one swinging, you remove your own need to have a reaction time, because obviously you're controlling what's happening. This allows you to pre-fire, which gains you milliseconds over your opponent, and in a game like Escape from Tarkov, where the time to kill is this fast, those milliseconds matter a whole lot. Tip number five, aggression is how you beat enemy squads. When you are fighting a squad, one of them is no doubt going to try to flank you. If you sit still while this is happening, you're basically just waiting to die. When they split up, they lose their immediate numbers advantage. It is at this point that you have to decide which one you think you have an edge over, and then you push them aggressively. If you're lucky, they'll be caught off guard, making them a pretty easy kill. After I killed the guy outside, I was then able to push the guy on the stairs, which resulted in me winning the 2v1. If you're fighting a duo, I highly recommend you push the guy who's trying to flank. Because he's moving, there's a higher chance he'll be out of cover or out of position, and you might catch them off guard, which makes them an easier kill than the guy who's going to be holding the angle. If you're fighting a 3v1, it just makes the most sense to push after the guy who's solo. If it's a 4v1, Good luck, and if it's a 5v1, just try to cause as much chaos as possible, maybe they'll end up killing each other. Tip number six, learn when to bail. Going back to the previous clip where I was cornered, I had a clear avenue of escape in the form of a window that I could have thrown myself out of. Well, it's not the best, and I probably would have snapped one of my femurs in half, at least it's better than getting shot. Here's another clip where I'm in the exact same room in a very similar scenario, and I decide not to wait around to die. Learning when to bail can be very important because it allows you to regain the initiative. Now that I'm outside and they're inside, they either have to push out to me, which is terrible because they only have a few ways they can do that, or I get to decide when to push in, which somewhat allows me to fight on my own terms. It's also good to know when you should just run away. If you are completely in over your head, knowing when to just say, screw it, I'm out of here, is a very good skill that can definitely help you survive more often. And considering the amount of rats in this game, I don't think running away is all that dishonorable nowadays. Speaking of rats, tip number seven. There is always one more, and he is always going to be a rat. The most important rule of Escape from Tarkov is there is always one more player. Nowadays though, there's always one more player in the squad and he is going to rat. The millisecond that you kill somebody's teammates, they anamorph into a rat and they go and find a corner and try to watch the body as long as possible. There isn't much of a way to deal with this other than to be very cautious and check your corners. If you are uncertain if there is another and the body is out in the open or something like that, sometimes you just have to abandon the loot. This is one of the hardest things you can do as a Tarkov player. You killed them, their loot is yours. But abandoning loot, understanding when it's just too risky to try to go loot it, is one of the best ways to increase your survival rate in the game. In this clip, I killed this guy, and believe me, I really, really wanted his loot. However, I had heard previously that he had a teammate, so after throwing a few nades and not hearing any movement whatsoever, I knew this guy wasn't going to move, I knew he was just watching his friend's body. I just decided to leave, and sure enough, a little bit later, I hear gunshots from that exact area. As tough as it can be, as annoying as it is, sometimes the loot just isn't worth it. Tip number eight. Bring grenades. Grenades are one of the only ways that you can get out of a situation where you are cornered and have no route of escape. Just toss one of these, odds are players are gonna run in fear because it's a grenade, and in that period of time, you have a small window to get into a better position. They're also just great in situations where you can't expose yourself. In this clip, I absolutely light this dude up. I didn't kill him, but I definitely blacked his limbs and probably his legs. That's why he didn't run away. He is the easiest swing peak right now. However, his friend down the hall is holding the door that I'm currently standing in. And while I could probably peek his friend, if I did, he just has to swing, I'm dead. If I try to swing him, his friend down the hall has an easy shot on my side, 
I'm dead. If only I had a device I could use to clear that area without exposing myself in the- Well, how about that? Hey, fuck me up right there. Hey, well, that's not cool, man. Even he knew he was dead. After the grenade dealt with him and quite literally blew him into the floor, I was able to push down the hall and kill his teammate pretty damn easily. Grenades are awesome, whether it's an M67 or an F1 or a VOG 25, definitely good to have. Of course, impacts are just really good and also goofy as hell. I heard running on the metal staircase and figured an impact couldn't hurt the situation. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that there was two of them, but you know, an impact grenade is more of a to whom it may concern, so it all worked out. Tip number nine, bring a secondary weapon if you are using a bolt action. This is one is very, very obvious, which is why I'm surprised I see a lot of solo players make this mistake. Um, a bolt action is not great against a team of players or even just one player who has an assault rifle. Seriously, there's a reason you don't use a bolt action at close range. Bring a secondary weapon. And I'm not talking a pistol because pistols are also not that great in Escape from Tarkov. Let's be completely honest with ourselves. If you are up against a team of people, unless you are John Wick or Sam Fisher, you are going to lose that even with a 5.7 or a shrimp. This is why I always recommend you bring an SMG or an AKS-74U, something lightweight, but very, very effective. My personal favorites are the SR-2M and the AKS-74U, but even a Keter is better than having a bolt action rifle. Please bring another weapon when using a sniper rifle. And that is gonna about do it. Obviously, the best way to improve at running solo is just to play the game and get better over time, but that's not very helpful, so hopefully these tips will help you along. Um, other than that, a weapons tier list will be going up next week, so um, be prepared for that. Be sure to check that out. And other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed. And I hope it was helpful, too. It's been a while since I've done a guide-like video.